Let's be real about it, y'all. The black girl got in a white girl's face and talked some trash, and the world don't like it. Welcome back to Mark My Words, ladies and gentlemen. Been a little minute, but you know, some some stuff that's been going on in the sports world. Uh wanna touch on one of the biggest stories this week has been uh this women's national championship game. Um, in particular the trash talk at the end of the game. But before we get to the national championship, I wanna go back to the final four game uh between South Carolina and Iowa. Kaitlyn Clark, Kaitlyn Clark is the truth, right? Kaitlyn Clark is the truth, right? And, and you know, shout out to South Carolina, a uh, great season they had. But going into the the issue, well, I won't say the issue, but the, the topic of discussion, um, post-game, Don Staley felt the need to defend her players because of how they've been perceived uh, this season. For her to say... For her to have to say, like, you know, my girls aren't thugs. We aren't rough. Um, if you actually knew the girls, if you actually knew my players, you would know that they're actually uh, great people, great young ladies. For her to have to say that is sad, which, you know, I love Don Staley. You know, what she's doing for the women's game. Um, you know, how she's how she's done with that South Carolina program. It's been great. But it's sad that she has to defend her players because of the things media and, and people say online and stuff. Um, and you could feel it. And, you know, the national championship between LSU and Iowa, I mean, you could you could feel like the racial tension, but you you felt it. You felt it in that final four game with South Carolina. So going into the national championship, um, it was a great game. LSU shot the lights out, I think, better than Iowa expected. I know the South Carolina game, Iowa let the girls shoot. They packed it in in the paint and let the girls shoot. But that LSU game, they let them shoot, and they actually had girls that could shoot. And, you know, they scored 102 points. I think that's a record uh, for the Women's National Championship. Going into the the what's been the topic of discussion all this week, Angel Reese uh, talking. Well, I mean, she talks trash, but Angel Reese doing the, you know, what people say is to John Cena, but. John Cena got it from from Tony Yayo, but you know John Cena made it famous. But doing the the you can't see me gesture, uh, I know a game. I think it was against Louisville. She said um, y'all down fifteen, you know whatever. But long story short, Kaylin did it first. So then Angel Reese does it at the end of the game. They had it had the game sewn up. It was one. Uh, Kaylin is a big trash talker. Angel Reese is a big trash talker herself. And she does it to Caitlyn. And she also points at her ring finger because you know they're about to uh, win the national championship. Was it excessive? Yes. But it's all in competition. Was it excessive? Sure. But it was all in competition. And, you know, people had different perceptions of it, you know, from a player's perspective. And even, you know, a lot of people think like this, you know, it's 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 all in the game. You know what I mean? It's nothing, it's nothing personal. And even Caitlin Clark came out after after the game and said, um, oh, you know, I, I wasn't even looking at her, which I think that was cap, but, you know, she just said she wasn't even looking at her and, um, you know, it's all competition and it's nothing personal. You know, Angel's a good player. And, you know, they won, so they kind of deserve that. And, that. and that's how I felt just watching it. I'm just like, you know, I mean, because if you've played sports, you know, like whatever happens between the lines of the field or the court, um, it is what it is. And when those competitive juices get going, it's nothing personal. You know, you're just trying to beat who's in front of you. But that's how I see it. You know what I'm saying? And, and Angel Reese is a, is, a, is a competitor and a person that talks trash. I mean, if you look at her all year, you know, that's what she does. You know, some people, they get themselves going in that way. I mean, even even leading up to the game, like some of the other girls on LSU's team was like, uh, I don't like how they played their defensive strategy against South Carolina. They just backed off of them and let them shoot. And they just felt like going into the game that they had to, you know, defend the South Carolina girls, which, you know, if they play South Carolina, they'd be trying to beat them. But, you know, those, that's, that's the SEC family and stuff. So 
in which that had nothing to do with LSU. So how Iowa played South Carolina had nothing to do with LSU. But as a as a competitor, uh, you always looking for certain things to to give you a little added motivation, you know. So you know, I got like I watched the Last Dance with Michael Jordan. You know, they said he used to make up stories just to piss himself off to get himself going. You know what I mean? Like that that's you know as a competitor as a player that's stuff you do just to just to give you that boost you know what i mean just that little spark to just play better so I, that's how i took it and, you know people were like why that that had nothing to do with lsu why to do that but that that's how i take it that's just why i think they did so but going back to the uh the the celebration at the end of the game it was a gesture that was, I mean, if you want to dive into it, was it excessive? Yes, but it, it was what it was. Like, that's Angel Reese. That's who she is. I didn't think anything else of it other than, oh, okay. Yeah, she, she's just talking a little trash. But the, the aftermath of it and the, the uproar that people had about it was crazy to me. You know, I'm going to say this and I'm going to, you know, you know and I'm going to say why. Why I think it's that way, I'm going to say this. The uproar for Caitlin Clark in support of Caitlin Clark is rooted in racism. Most people know it. I think I, I think more people know that than they want to realize. But it's facts. And I'll say this. So Hey, when Kayla, it's it's just a difference in just the 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 swag and the confidence and the traits, just the perception of it. So like Angel Reese is on the record saying she's been called um, ghetto and you know classless and all these other things all year for for how she is. You know what I mean? She's you know she's a little she's expressive. She she does TikToks a lot. She's I mean I've seen her score and one in a game and do a TikTok dance. She talks a lot of trash. You know, that's, you know, people don't like to see that. When I say people, I mean just general, just, you know, fans, you know, whatever, people online or whatever. But if somebody like Caitlyn does it, it's like, oh, man, she's, you know, she she's great. She's, you know, she's competitive. I'll give you another example. Let's, let's go football. When Cam Newton was, uh, when Cam Newton was playing and he was, he was dressing, you know what I'm saying? He was dressing nice and had the hats and, and, and things like that. And he was doing the dab. He was scoring touchdowns and doing the dab and stuff. People had a problem with that. You know, people said, you know, he, he needed to quit and he was classless and things like that. I remember Colin Kaepernick, he had the Afro. It was people saying, you know, Colin Kaepernick needed to cut his Afro or something like that. Like people, people had a problem with that. But then you look at Aaron Rodgers, somebody like Aaron Rodgers, he does the discount double check celebration. They love that. They eat that up. They love that. That's competitive. That's, you know, with somebody like Cam Newton, that swag and stuff, they, they got a problem with it. Uh, Joe Burrow, even now, Joe Burrow. They love Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow shows up to the game with with, with his with his nice clothes and his swag and stuff. They love it. They call him Joe Shiesty now. Joe Shiesty. In reference to, you know, Pooh Shiesty. Eddie, you listen to Pooh Shiesty, bro? He said, who is that? That'd be turned, bro. He'd be trying to act like he don't. And they and they love him having swag and and you know saying things that are, you know, if, if a if a black player said it, it'd be looked at as, you know, he's arrogant or he's uh classless or you're ghetto and things like that. I'll give another example. Everybody's always loved LeBron his whole career. Been a fan favorite, all that. As soon as LeBron became outspoken and um started standing up for, you know, social justice and um, you know, police brutality and things. Then people started hating Brian. They didn't like Brian no more. I've talked to people. I've talked to people and oh, I don't like LeBron. Oh, why? I don't know. I just don't like him. I wonder why. Kyrie Irving and just, you know, certain things, the way he's perceived and stuff. At the end of the day, it's like he has a choice to to handle things how he wants. You know what I mean? I mean, he's a grown man. I mean, he's, you know. He he got to deal with whatever conf consequences. That's you know whether getting a vaccine or, you know, just whatever. Sitting out, ask for a trade. You know all that stuff. But Kyrie's a guy who, you know, when he's playing, everything is cool. You know what I mean. But as soon as he starts speaking out against stuff, oh now he's just a distraction. He's you know they don't like him. The media hates him. You know he's the topic of discussion and stuff. But then when Brooklyn was winning, 
when they went on that, that run and they were winning and stuff and everything was clicking. That was before KD got hurt and, you know, eventually they, they both ended up traded. Then it, it was no media coverage for that. The media thrives off thrives off negativity. I mean, I, you know, everybody knows that, but, you know, just like Westbrook. I mean, the, the story early on this year about Westbrook was, you know, he was just talking about how terrible Westbrook was. Then he started playing well and everybody was quiet. But what I'm saying, and, and I'll get back to, you know, Andrew Reese uh, situation, but um, it's just, it's it's rooted in racism. And it's just, everything is seen as different. It's just seen as different. I bring up another thing. Brandon Miller, shout out to Brandon. From the city, that boy about to go top two. Top two in the draft. Everybody loved Brandon, one of the best players in the country this year. Probably the best player in the country this year. He was robbed of of being what was that a Wooden Award finalist? That's a, that's another that's another conversation. He was robbed. Should have won Player of the Year, but he wasn't even named a finalist. We know why. But um, shout out to Brandon. Brandon was playing this year. Everybody loved him. Brandon. You know, oh, I, everybody just loved Brandon. As soon as his name got brought up in a in a situation, then you know the trolls came out. Everybody had negative stuff to say. You know, that's just how that's how the that's how the world looks at black athletes. You know. Shut up and dribble, entertain me, play, play and don't say anything, or, or or play and don't have any expression, don't have any swag, you know, just just play. Don't throw it in our face. You're already good. Don't throw it in our face. Just play. Keep your mouth closed. That's how they. That's how they want the black athletes to be. But if it's a white athlete, it's oh, it's, it's competitive. They love it. Oh man, it's it's great. It's entertaining. But back to the Angel Reese, uh, Kalen Clark situation. I think it's great. They set a record for definitely the highest viewed national championship game for women. I guess so. I don't have to double check that, but I think it's great. It's just, it, it's unfortunate. And I, and I think people need to see that, recognize what the problem is with that. Because I think it's great for the women's game, but the, the, the deeper issue at hand is how people view certain things. The president of the CEO or owner of Barstool, he tweets out about Angel Reese for doing the, that she was a classless piece of, she's, Angel Reese is 20 years old, bro. You know what I mean? It's a basketball game, you know? Like I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, she talking her stuff. Maybe she did a little much, but it's a game. You know what I mean? People really was, in support of like the the aftermath was crazy. Like Caitlyn don't Caitlyn Clark doesn't need the whole world, you know what I mean, supporting her over some trash talk. Like I'm sure if Angel Reese and and I just watched, she just did an exclusive. She did a sit down with I Am Athlete like yesterday or something like that. And she said, you know, she said she hasn't talked to Caitlyn Clark since the national championship. But I'm sure if they seen each other, it'd be all up. Like it's it's a game, you know what I mean? The aftermath of it, bro. It, it says a lot. Like for people to have all that to say about Angel Reese just for talking trash. Again, was it excessive? Man, she maybe did a lot, but that's her. That's her, and it was a game, and she just won a national championship. So those emotions. I mean, she's excited, but I mean, just let that be that. I mean, it's nothing. It's nothing more, nothing less. I mean, don't make it personal. But people were really, yeah. I mean, y'all see it. I mean, just look, look up, look up what people are saying about Angel Reese. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Like I said, did she do a little bit too much? All right, maybe. But that's that's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, for like, oh, she did. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She just talk a little trash, then it's over. But people really came to the defense of Caitlyn. Why? Because this thing is rooted in racism. Let's be real about it, y'all. You know, the black girl got in a white girl's face and talked some trash, and the world don't like it. Let's be real about it. Then let, let's go into the to the Jill Biden situation. Let's get into that. Jill Biden, the wife of President Joe Biden, says, I think we should invite. And, you know, and let me just back up a little bit. So for y'all that don't know, the winner of championships, whether that's the NBA, NFL, you know, NCAA men's basketball, NCAA women's basketball, whoever wins the, the, the championship comes out on top is invited to the White House. First Lady Jill Biden says, I think we should invite 
LSU and Iowa to the White House. Why? For what? <laughs> for one, it's never happened. And that, for one, it's never happened. And why? Like, the game didn't end in a tie. Games don't end in ties. Why would you invite the runner up? Why? If LSU would have lost, they wouldn't have got an invite to the White House. It would just be Iowa. Iowa would just go, and, and that'd be it. And let's be real about it. Since the team, Iowa is predominantly white roster. LSU's got all black girls that are all, you know, got swag and hoop and you got other, you know, NIL deals and maybe rap and you know what I'm saying? Got the swag and, you know, do the gritty and it's a parade inside their city. They wouldn't have got invited if Iowa would have won. But since the, the the predominantly white team lost, okay. That and I and I, and I'm not saying teams that have been mostly white haven't lost national championships before or won them. But it's this just goes to show how big race was into this game. How it was looked at, how big like you could just feel it. You could just feel it. Like the whole it wasn't just a regular game. It was like a, a it was just the the racial tension was crazy. You could just feel it. And I'm glad Caitlin Clark came out and said what she had to say. Because she, you know, first she said, you know, Angel was just, you know, congrats to, to Angel and LSU. They won. She was just talking some trash because they won, you know. Then she said, I don't think we, we, need, to, we need to go to the White House because, you know, they're the champions and, and they deserve. So she spoke for herself. So when everybody had all that, all that to say and, you know, had all that anger and, and, and you know, expression built up in support of her she came out and spoke for herself and said hey, you know that's it which i'm glad she did but no lsu wouldn't have wouldn't have got invited if they would have if they would have lost uh and to to sum this this racial thing up i just i just want to say this about you know like like i said it's been a you could feel the racial tension with the uh, first. It was a South Carolina Iowa game, and then Iowa came out on top, and then you could feel it with the the LSU Iowa game. And I see people online that bring up the race thing, which is legitimate, and people have issues with it. So I just want to say this, and it, this goes for everybody. This it, people of all races, you know, whatever, because this people that are white, black, you know, Hispanic, Asian, whatever that think you know, both ways. So what I'm about to say, it doesn't go for, you know, one race, particular race. It's just a general thing. You can't be, you can't be tone deaf to other people's situation. Let me be specific. Just because it's not something you go through doesn't mean it's not a thing. So I, people say, I see people say, Oh, why do why does the race card have to be pulled? Why do we have to bring? Why do we have to play the race card? Why does race have to be brought into it? Because it's a factor in everything. Maybe it's not a factor in your life, or maybe it is, and you don't want to recognize it, or maybe you do see it. You just don't want to talk about it because you benefit from it. But that doesn't mean it's not a it's not a thing. So people say, why do we have to bring the race card in the, you know, this Angel Reese thing? It's because it, it is a factor. You know, people people want to act like stuff don't exist just because they're not affected by, it. you know, just because maybe somebody is short and, they, you know, they, they deal with problems because they're short. Maybe me being tall, I'm not going to be like, oh, no, that's not a thing. Well, I, that's not something I deal with. So I'm not going to act like it's not a thing. You know, people people are discriminated against. For if you don't get discriminated against, maybe that's, that's not your reality. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Because black people have been discriminated against disadvantage since for years so if you see black people rooting for you know the LSU or watching Family Feud we rooting for the black family or Tiger Woods is playing in the Masters we rooting for Tiger Serena's playing we rooting for Serena it's just that we just want to see us win. That's all it is. 
It's not, oh, we're pulling for Angel Reese and LSU. That's because we hate Caitlin Clark. That's not what it is. We just want to see us win. That's it on that. So shout out to Angel Reese. Shout out to Caitlin Clark. For winning player of the year. Shout out to Angel. I thought Angel, I thought Angel Reese should uh should have won SEC player of the year. Aaliyah Boston won it. Um Aaliyah Boston's about to be the number one pick in the WBA draft. Shout out to South Carolina and, and Don Staley. Um shout out to the women's game, period, man. Y'all keep supporting uh the women's game. I think all this has been great. It's been all great attention for the women's game. Uh, just my thoughts, man. Again, congrats to LSU. And yeah. <laughs>